A number of enhancements have been made to turning toolpath operations inside FeatureCam 2013 R2. In this particular example you can see we've got a valve fitting with a number of pre-created features. If I do a 3D simulation, play this through, you can see I've got a facing operation, an outside diameter turn, an internal bore and also a groove operation. There is a thread on the end of this part for some kind of fitting. In terms of the new features, you can see we've already pre-created some features for you, but I'm going to start and recreate my own one using this default turning operation. To do this, I'm going to uncheck the setup and then turn on the OD turn default example. If I look at the top view, I'm just going to go into the properties of this toolpath and just select the finish and say preview. If I play the preview through we can see the shape of the toolpath as we did, would expect. If I single step this you can see the tool approaches, we get a lead in move, we come along the shape of the turn profile and then we retract out. However, in FeatureCam 2013 R2, we've now added more control for this lead-in operation. You'll note that we have a new tab called Leads that's appeared for finishing operations. I can select this option and you'll notice I get control of both the lead-in and the lead-out. I can choose to arc in an arc in for both. I can set an angle that this arc radius occurs over. I can also set an arc out radius, an arc in radius from this value here. In this case I'm going to leave the defaults as 5 and 45 degrees, apply and preview that toolpath. Note the tool approaches from the same location, only this time we get the arc move I get the profile, as I would expect, and then we arc off. This nice smooth transition allows us to machine longer parts in different segments. We then have a nice smooth transition into each segment to try and reduce any witness marks that might occur on the part when finishing. It's worth noting the position of this you can see we start immediately on the arc. If I eject this and this time you can see tool nose radius compensation has been switched off. If I go to my strategy page and turn on the tool nose radius compensation, go to the finish tab you'll notice this is now switched on. If I re-preview that toolpath you'll see we get a small linear move before we arc into the part. We also get the linear move at the end as well. This is down to the fact that we are turning on the compensation during those linear segments. We can verify this by checking in the post. If I go to the NC code, you'll notice in the finishing operation at the moment my tool nose radius compensation is turned off. Let's turn this on in the post. So I'm going to set Enable tool, tool Nose Radius Compensation, Replay, check the NC code, scroll down to the Finish Operation, and you'll now see our compensation has been switched on in that linear move. This can be done for boring operations as well. So in this case I've got a bore operation. Again, if I preview the Finish Operation, Let's just turn off the shading so we can see this internally. So at the moment we've got the linear approach and the linear retracts. So the tool is getting close to the internal edge of where my existing stock was. It's going to eject that back. I'm going to go into the leads option and again I'm going to set an arc in and arc out. I'm going to leave the default arc in value 
but the arc out I'm going to make a 90 degree approach and then set my radius, in this case I'm going to set a radius of 2 millimeters. Preview that finish operation. I get my retract like so. I also want to remove the clearance, I don't need that clearance value anymore. So I can go in and change the clearance value, maybe minimize that down to say one millimeter and preview again. Once I'm happy with that, I can run my 3D simulation. Just turn our facing operation on. So I get my initial face, my roughing operation, I then get my arcing on to the part, and the same with the boring operation. The other enhancement we've added is the ability to control the withdraw approach from our grooving operations. Let's again go to our groove default operation, preview this toolpath, so note the grooving tool comes in, cuts to depth, moves across, cuts to depth. It is at this point where the tool is retracting up and it's skimming the material it's just cut into. There is nothing we can do about the first pass, but the subsequent passes we now have enough room to clear the tool backwards. I can check that by going into the roughing, into the turning tab, and you'll notice that we have a side lift off angle and a side lift off distance. In this example I'm going to set my angle to be 45 degrees. I'm going to set a lift off distance to be 2 millimeters. I can now re-preview that toolpath. Again we get the first plunge. We're not going to move sideways in this first plunge because we've only just cleared the material. But now when we get to the second plunge, as we retract out, we use that lift off angle to clear the part. This continues to repeat throughout the process. I'm going to turn on the rest of my features just to complete the part. Dropping my speed of simulation down to get my finished component.